I, I, I did want to quickly say a word or two about that moment, and I know some of most of you maybe have even heard this, but um, it still give me, gives me goosebumps to remember the moment when I met Neil because I was literally sitting at my desk working on that talk, and the talk was about what happens for people when they are confronted with um, an, a, a, an event or a moment in their life when um, they can literally count off seconds or minutes or hours or days between them and something that they don't want to face. And my VP of development walks into my office at that exact moment as I'm wrestling with this sort of critical point in the speech or in the talk, um, and Yvonne Marr is her name, and, and she says, I've got somebody you've got to meet. Um, his name is Neil Alexander, and I said, I'm kind of busy. I'm, I'm right in the middle of all this you know, heavy, heavy thinking. And um, she says, no, you really got to meet this guy, and, and, and he'd like to meet you. And so when she tells me that, I, I do that, and I, I go down, and I, um, and I uh, walk in, and I meet Neil and Suzanne, and, um, and Neil basically says to me, um, I, I've got ALS, um, and I got things I want to do. And it was the most remarkable thing, because um, everything I'd been thinking about for that talk came together in one moment with one man. And I, I, I want to embarrass Neil for a moment, and also tease him a little bit, because everybody at these things always just says everything positive, right? But, you know, um, so, so the, the, you know, Neil is, um, you, you, when you hear people talk about him, um, the, the thing you always hear is Neil is brave, and Neil is brave, duh. I mean, you know, obviously he's brave. Um, it doesn't begin to capture what he is. Um, Neil is brave and he is thoughtful and he is engaged and he is devoted to family and he cares about community and he cares deeply about friendships and he wants his life to count and he wants other people's lives to count and he wants his legacy to be real and he's also a little bit nuts um, <laughs> because because he will not let anything get him down, um, and he and and he and he just has this unbelievable capacity to persevere. Um, he is the most fully alive person I know. So think about that. You know, think about somebody dealing with what he's dealing with. And when we complain in our day-to-day -day lives about the things that we complain about, it's good to remember how fully alive somebody can be. And what Neil is modeling for us is a capacity to do all of those things, but a way to live. Uh, and it is, I just think, a tremendous honor, Neil, to be able to be associated with you. And I would like, and Suzanne, and I'd like for us to just applaud you for a moment. But you are a little nuts. <laughs> I, um, he, he asked me, uh, Neil and Suzanne actually asked me to, um, to read Lou Gehrig's famous speech. And so when he came in and he said, I've got things that I want to do, um, what he made very clear was he wanted to create this fund um, named for, for Lou uh, Gehrig's legacy. He wanted this fund to be called Live Like Lou. And he wanted it to carry forward this incredible purpose of advancing understanding of ALS, working with people with ALS, helping people with ALS, um, and, and this notion of living like Lou was so striking to me because it's, it was selfless. This was not your typical person coming in and saying, let's name a fund for us, or, but it was about someone else and an example of how to live life that they had modeled. Um, Frank, you, uh, I think you, you hit the highlights of, what, of, of the context of the speech. You know, Lou Gehrig was, was sort of at the peak of his career. He, he played 2,130 consecutive baseball games. He, um, he really was considered, uh, if not the best, one of the best players. Um, and, and, that, and that, I guess, has continued to this day, right? Um, you would probably know that better than a foundation head. He <laughs> was uh, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so he, he has to stop playing on April 30 because he's been hit by this inexplicable weakness. Um, and by June, he's diagnosed at the Mayo Clinic 
with what becomes known then as Lou Gehrig's disease and what we now know as ALS. Um, and by July, he's giving this speech uh, at Yankee Stadium, apparently uh, in between games of a doubleheader with the Washington Senators. So um, we don't have a doubleheader here today, but I'm going to try to, um, it's a very, very brief speech, uh, but I want to share with you, because Neil wanted to share with you the words that inspire him uh, and inspire this model of being, which I think is so extraordinary. Fans, for the past two weeks you have been reading about the bad break I got. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of this earth. I have been in ballparks for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. Look at these grand men. Which of you wouldn't consider it the highlight of his career just to associate with them for even one day? Sure, I'm lucky. Who wouldn't consider it an honor to have known Jacob Rupert? Also, the builder of baseball's greatest empire, Ed Barrow. To have spent six years with that wonderful little fellow, Miller Huggins. Then to have spent the next nine years with that outstanding leader, that smart student of psychology, the best manager in baseball today, Joe McCarthy. Sure, I'm lucky. When the New York Giants, a team you would give your right arm to beat, and vice versa, sends you a gift, that's something. When everybody down to the groundskeepers and those boys in white coats remember you with trophies, that's something. When you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes sides with you and squabbles with her own daughter, that's something. When you have a father and a mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who has been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dreamed existed, that's the finest I know. So, I close in saying that I may have had a tough break, but I have an awful lot to live for.